Today is July 17, 2007. My name is Tony Hilliard. We're here at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia, conducting uh, a Veterans Oral History Program interview with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ted Frank, retired U.S. Air Force. Uh, for the record, could you give me your name and uh, your address, please? Yes. <clears throat> As you said, Lieutenant Colonel Ted Frank, retired. Uh, currently uh, living in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, <clears throat> lived there 17 years. Originally uh, born uh, and raised in Anderson, Indiana. Uh, graduated from Anderson High School in 1963 and went to Northwestern University where I graduated in 1967 with a BS in Business Administration. Uh, entered uh, Air Force Officer Training School that August under the pressure of the draft as many uh, young men my age did. I had uh, student deferments uh, while I was at Northwestern uh, throughout uh, my four years until my senior year. And my draft board, uh, in their wisdom, uh, uh, in my senior year took that away from me before Christmas and uh, ordered me to have a draft physical <laughs> so that I knew uh, by the time I graduated uh, that I would be entering the armed forces in some capacity and uh, looked around for a better deal than uh, pounding the ground as a army uh, or uh, possibly a marine uh, enlisted person and uh, with my uh, degree I thought I could uh, uh, become an officer in uh, one of the uh, 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 services uh, I looked at the Navy first because my Father had been a uh, Navy officer in World War II and uh, uh, thought uh, I might try uh, uh, flying and uh, pass the um, uh, flying uh, uh, test, but my eyesight wasn't good enough to do that for the Navy, so I also knew that I uh, couldn't qualify as a pilot for the Air Force, but uh, uh, went into officer training school uh, as a you know, as supply uh, officer uh, <clears throat> candidate and uh, graduated in uh, November of 67. Uh, uh, from there, after a short uh, leave, uh, went out to Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix. Uh, had a wonderful year out there in the southwest at uh, a fighter training base and uh, 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 during that time, uh, volunteered to go to Vietnam, uh, uh, enthusiastically uh, 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 went there to uh, serve a, a great year uh, with the C-7 Caribou Wing at Cameron Bay, uh, eight months uh, there before uh, spending four months at uh, Bung Tau Army Airfield, at, uh, <coughs> down at Bung Tau. Uh, the first eight months at Cameron Bay, uh, I was a staff supply officer. Uh, didn't have a lot to do uh, there other than doing uh, supply reports for the uh, full colonel that uh, was the uh, materiel, I think that's what he was called at the time, the uh, <coughs> materiel, um, chief of materiel. Um, <coughs> but uh, because I didn't have that much to do, I uh, was the uh, repository of most of the additional duties and one of those was the wing uh, information officer and we were a tenant unit and uh, uh, so uh, in that capacity as information officer I had uh, blanket travel orders and was able then to uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, whenever I wanted to jump on a C-7 caribou and go around country uh, gathering information to publicize the wings activities and uh, gave me an opportunity to see what was going on uh, everywhere. Uh, pretty much a unique opportunity. Uh, I've got pictures that uh, uh, I'm now uh, able to uh, not just show my family and my two sons, but uh, uh, other military uh, people that I come across as I travel. I'm now retired and uh, Spent a lot of time uh, traveling around the country and visiting bases, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, and run into many Vietnam veterans, uh, a lot of whom do not have pictures because they were out uh, fighting in the boonies and 
couldn't have cameras uh, like I did, and uh, uh, so I'm uh, trying to get my negatives converted to CDs and uh, provide them. Uh, I've got a list of people that I've promised to provide uh, uh, pictures to uh, once I get these uh, little instamatic uh, 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 negatives converted to CDs, uh, uh, and that's not been easy. But uh, hopefully I'll get that project done uh, sometime uh, in the not too distant future. But uh, uh, my year in Vietnam was uh, uh, interesting and I think unique uh, because of uh, uh, those circumstances. And uh, met some uh, terrific uh, fellows that uh, I still keep in contact with. Our C-7 Caribou Wing uh, uh, has a, uh, an association that has annual conventions. We have one coming up in September. Uh, in San Antonio, looking forward to getting together with uh, uh, fellows, uh, uh, one of whom was my roommate in Vietnam that uh, uh, I've kept in contact with by phone and email. Uh, I haven't seen uh, in all that time, but he will be there, and uh, we look forward to uh, uh, that reunion, uh, and uh, we've already decided that we're going to uh, get a group together to go back to Vietnam uh, in 2008. Uh, uh, which will be our 40th uh, 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 year. Uh, 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 we all arrived in Vietnam in uh, 1968, uh, and so that'll be uh, fun for us to go back to Vietnam for that uh, that tour, back to where we'd been and some places that we weren't able to go on the ground uh, uh, 40 years ago. Let's when see. you. I think you told me earlier you you arrived in country in the fall or the latter part of the year. Early December of '68. Early December of '68. Yeah. What was your first impression when you? Uh, when well, you I was got... pretty tired because it was a 24-hour flight, uh, and of course the time difference uh, had to adjust to. Uh, it was hot, even in December. Uh, uh, but uh, it was exciting. Um, uh, and then uh, getting to uh, hear the stories of the folks that had been there for a while, uh, meeting all the new people, um, uh, getting uh, uh, briefed on what my responsibilities were going to be, uh, being young and um, uh, just uh, acclimated to uh, the war zone. And uh, Cameron Bay was a huge installation. So there was a lot of exploring to do. Uh, they had uh, not only the Air Force, but the Army and Navy and Vietnamese and Koreans and uh, just a lot of things to do and see. And our uh, quarters were up on the on the hill overlooking the ocean, and uh, we had the uh, beach to go to on Sundays, our day off. And uh, all in all, it was not a bad. Uh, bad place to be assigned. How long were you there before you uh, uh, became involved with the, the Caribou uh, folks? Were you, were you not the, the uh, supply officer? Was well, it for I the Caribou the, wing? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I, I guess what I'm asking is how long were you before you got into the business of the information Officer and, and did began your traveling and in uh... oh, a matter of weeks. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, the, actually, the first thing I I, I did uh, where I started getting a lot of pictures uh, was uh, Christmas Day, uh, where uh, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and a lot of the army guys may uh, remember this that were over there during that era. The the, the caribou. Uh, uh, each squadron, there were six of them, two at Cameron Bay, two at uh, Phuket, and two at uh, Bung Tau. They painted up the uh, noses of the uh, planes to look like a Santa Claus, and they played, uh, uh, had Merry Christmas painted on the fuselage, and uh, the uh, flight mechanics wore Santa Claus suits, and uh, they flew uh, uh, up into the, the Green Beret camps. Uh, uh, and I, I asked whether I could go along and was granted permission. And uh, every time they landed, they had a, 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 a it's like a, a fireplace with stockings. And they pulled that off and uh, 
uh, the Green Berets would bring their Montagnard uh, counterparts uh, uh, up and uh, they'd, they'd get served eggnog and uh, Red Cross uh, packages were passed around and uh, the villagers would come up uh, uh, to the camp uh, edge uh, and uh, uh, they'd get uh, given gifts and, uh, and so forth and uh, it was just a, a, a fun way to spend that day and then we, uh, after going into seven or eight camps, uh, we ended up at play coup to the, uh, I think it was the uh, Special Forces B team and had Christmas uh, dinner uh, there. So it was what, was, a, what was the reaction of the, uh, the mountain yards to the idea of Christmas and Santa Claus and... and uh, uh, it, it was hard to tell because I, I didn't speak the language, and, uh, uh, but they, they, they seemed very friendly to me personally. and. Uh, uh, so I, I didn't have any real uh, interaction with them uh, because of that language difference, but uh, other than smiles and handshakes and so forth. But uh, I mean, it was one of the most fantastic days I've ever had. And so so you, there, you did you made five or six trips that that first time that first Christmas. Well, we uh, uh, probably went into six to seven camps, possibly eight. Uh, weren't on the ground very long uh, uh, at each one. In fact, one of the camps we went into uh, were apparently notified that the North Vietnamese were rolling up uh, artillery close enough to shell the base, and so we had to leave quickly. And, uh, uh, and it was uh, interesting to see how the pilots had to come into the camps and uh, come over high and then spiral their landing uh, techniques uh, quite harrowing to avoid uh, uh, ground fire. And, w were uh, the landing strips strips uh, unapproved for the most part? Okay, so it was uh, essentially a dirt? corrugated. Okay. Uh, uh, right. So it was really an expeditionary environment. As oh yeah, you would say. yeah. The Caribou was a, a twin-engine uh, cargo plane uh, designed that could uh, airdrop cargo or land. Of course, these days uh, the, that particular mission they landed each time. Uh, but uh, uh, so it, it was a, a good familiarization of the mission for me, and uh, and then I, I was able to on uh, for the rest of my year over there uh, do a lot of flying with them, and I never got uh, uh, shot at fortunately on any of the missions I went on, but uh, was able to hear a lot of stories, particularly from my roommate as he came back from missions. Uh, 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 particularly at uh, Bung Tao uh, for my last four months where we lived in a hotel downtown that uh, uh, all the uh, pilots uh, and maintenance officers, the officers had uh, a hotel, uh, each squadron, the two squadrons uh, each had a hotel downtown and enlisted uh, 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 fellows uh, lived on the base but uh, you know, we, had, we had a bus that took us to, that had uh, uh, wire mesh over the windows so grenades couldn't be thrown through the windows onto the bus sort of thing but uh, uh, our hotel was near the beach and interestingly Bung Tao was was considered an in-country R&R location for the army uh, for us Air Force it, you know it, uh, it didn't seem quite <laughs> we went out of country for R&R &R ourselves but uh, uh, when when I told army guys uh, uh, that's, that's that's where I was they, they thought it was a real big deal but uh, uh, interesting story about that, uh, uh, around the corner, uh, I, this is a story I have not told my wife, uh, uh, there was a bar and it was off limits. And uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, woman that owned the bar, uh, uh, I uh, 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 and the rest of the guys, the pilots, uh, uh, an off-limits place for young guys is just, uh, just using an invitation to, to, to go there. And uh, so we, we went there from time to time. And uh, the, the woman who owned it had a 14-year-old son who, who sort of stood guard outside to watch for the MPs and, or the Air Force Security Police. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, I was sitting at the bar one night with uh, uh, my roommate and uh, some of the other guys. And uh, the... the little 14-year-old uh, uh, shouts that something out, the MPs are coming. So there's a flurry of activity of everybody trying to uh, uh, avoid capture. And, and uh, I guess the, the woman owned the bar 
took more of a liking to me than the rest of the guys for some reason and motioned to me to come under the bar to the back room, which I did, and she covered me up with a big burlap sack, and, and, and I was the only one that didn't get uh, <laughs> taken to the wherever they took the rest of the guys, uh, and, and uh, I forget exactly how they got embarrassed and I forget whether any disciplinary action was uh, 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 a, a part of what uh, ultimately happened, but uh, uh, nothing happened to me as a result of uh, uh, getting into the back room and covered up with the burlap. Uh, so. Was was there ever any security concern with where you were staying in town? Uh, there was, and, and another interesting story about that. We we had uh, 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 some uh, periodic. Uh, 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 what should I say, um, drills, and where if we were attacked, uh, uh, we were, uh, among other things, we were supposed to shoot off flares, and that was to uh, draw the attention of somebody to come to our assistance. Well, uh, shortly before I left, uh, uh, a, a couple of days before, a couple of, other, a couple of the pilots uh, uh, were due to rotate back, and they, uh, in the process of celebrating their departure, uh, got a little drunk and, and got into the flares and shot off a few. And unfortunately, nobody responded. Uh, so we, we decided maybe our system <laughs> didn't work all that well. <laughs> and then I was glad I was leaving shortly after that, and I, I, I assume they probably altered the uh, security plan. Uh, they learned that the flares didn't work. But, uh, when you were, uh, uh, well, the Caribou unit or the or the, the, the Caribou missions, you said were into uh, most cases the uh, Green Beret camps up. Uh, yeah, in, in all cases, they, the Caribou mission was dedicated to the Green Berets, and they actually controlled the planes to the extent that uh, okay. when we were at, uh, when I was went down at uh, Bung Tau, I was the supply and logistics officer, well actually the supply and transportation officer. Uh, uh, and uh, our planes would leave empty from Bung Tau to go to Saigon and then load up whatever the Green Berets had to take out to all their camps. If I had equipment that needed to be turned in up at Tonsonut, we had to take it overland okay. uh, and take convoys. And this was really a quirk in the system. Uh, uh, so we would have to drive our vehicles from Bung Tau to Tonsonut. It would take us a day to go up, uh, and we'd have to stay overnight and then turn the equipment in, maybe bring the equipment back to Bung Tau the next day. So I ended up, uh, as an Air Force officer, uh, 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 with a, a 45, uh, uh, and we were, you know, this was really interesting. We weren't even authorized uh, uh, weapons. Uh, we weren't authorized uh, radio. Uh, we, uh, all we had were flares uh, out on the road in territory where the Viet Cong operated. Uh, made us sort of nervous. And we had vehicle breakdowns. Uh, one in particular, I remember distinctly, where it got to be, we were uh, up near Long Bend, and it got to be toward dusk. Uh, and uh, uh, fortunately, there was an Army APC that came along and sat with us till we got the vehicle fixed. And we never had to test the uh, uh, theory that shooting off a flare might draw somebody friendly rather than the Viet Cong. Uh, if we needed so, so if you but, uh, if you made that that trip, you would uh, one or two trucks and, and a forty five. Well, sometimes three or four trucks. Well, a flatbed. Uh, 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 we would have a um, oh, uh, a, a bigger uh, like a no. Oh, let's see. If we had had a. Uh, the truck I drove, uh, the lead truck, which I rode shotgun, and I had a listed fellow that drove, and then uh, uh, we had a flatbed where we, we'd take 55-gallon drums of something or other, uh, mm -hmm. uh, another truck, uh, 
uh, of some sort, sometimes three vehicle, vehicles, sometimes four, uh, just enough to haul equipment of various sorts. But I mean, that sounds a little bit scary, a three or four truck I mean, convoy just... Yeah, and we were trained, we, we would go out, to, I'd take my guys out to the gunner, uh, uh, firing range and we'd you know, fire off uh, with M16s old ammunition uh, just so they were halfway qualified uh, before you got into But I mean, you, you were your own security. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, I mean, it was, it was rather bizarre yeah. for Air Force guys back in that era <laughs> yeah. to do this kind of duty. And, uh, but like I said, we had no radios even because uh, according to the Air Force equipment schedule, I mean, this this wasn't supposed to happen, so we weren't authorized to. It was right. just one of those quirks. So and and we had empty planes flying from Bung Tau to Tonsonut, but because the Green Brace uh, uh, controlled them, we weren't authorized to put our own equipment on. That's interesting. I know. I mean, so when uh, in in the uh, I guess in 1969 did uh, did you experience the monsoons up there? Did that affect anything that was going on? Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, occasionally and one time in particular, uh, Cameron they had to evacuate the planes and, and they went up to uh, the lot somewhere. They took them up in the Highlands. I remember that. Yeah. Well, uh, when you would go out what what was what would make you decide to uh, participate in one of the caribou missions I mean was there something that uh, you knew was was happening or did you just do, kind of do it randomly well sometimes randomly uh, sometimes I'd, I'd find out that a friend was somewhere I had a, a childhood friend who was an army advisor uh, 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 that uh, ended up uh, at a uh, camp not too far from Phuket, and so uh, I, I flew up to Phuket, and he came over and picked me up, and I went out and spent a weekend with him at his camp. Uh, and interestingly, uh, uh, within a few months after I was with him, actually, actually it was after I left the country, I did it not, not too long before I transferred to Germany. His camp got attacked, and he got severely wounded, got a Silver Star, a couple of his troops that I met got killed getting him on a medevac helicopter. Uh, uh, I had a uh, another friend down at Tonsonut. I just went down. I had a lot of flexibility to go anywhere I wanted. You know, usually I had to say, yeah, let you know, somebody know you. Yeah, going out to do my duty, but you know, I did have uh, the luxury of. Uh, Doing would you would you do it on a cyclical basis, like uh, one two times a month, or more frequently than that? Or uh, more frequently, really, because my responsibilities for my official duties uh, just weren't that, that great. Well, was how I know the 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 the, uh, the Green Ray camps were at least fixed or semi fixed. Mm -hmm. How many of those were out there? I mean, how many of those places did you? How many? Oh, they had a lot of them up in the Central Highlands, particularly. Um, and it was interesting. I mean, they, you know, they all looked like Wild West fortresses. I mean, a lot of them they had a, almost a, like a pentagonal uh, configuration, and you know, concertina wire. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure uh, I don't know that much about <coughs> the uh, army uh, uh, um, uh, <coughs> yeah. um, Ammunition, uh, oh, the Claymore but, mines, yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've heard about. But they were pretty they, much alone. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. other than you know, that, a handful of guys, and then they're. Uh, the uh, Mountain Yards lived outside the wire, and, yeah. and the, the Green Berets lived yeah. inside the wire. Yeah. And I, you know, being an Air Force guy, he's, uh, living in air conditioned quarters and, uh, you know, hot water all the time, and it always uh, amazed me uh, seeing how these guys lived. When you, when you said you were, uh, you would take pictures of the places and, uh, uh, show them, or, or you're in the process of, of telling people or showing people mm -hmm. pictures of where they are, where they were. Um, did each of the were, were the camps near a town or something like that, or were they were they kind of on their own, just uh, a coordinate on a map? My uh 
sense was that they were mostly near towns. Near I mean, they, had, they all had names. Okay. Uh, Play Me, Play Dring, uh, uh, and, and when I look them up on maps, uh, it, it looks like they were close to villages. Um, you never drove up to any of them? No. Uh, the, the, the camps I flew into, uh, I never got off the camp itself. Okay. Uh, now, when I was a Cameron, I, I would drive, uh, I, I drove up to Natrang, uh, that uh, raised an interesting uh, uh, issue uh, uh, because I was the repository of all these additional duties. One big one was I, I got uh, uh, designated to uh, be uh, the uh, representative to the Army uh, for 30 days down at the, uh, where the Army was located uh, at Cameron as the uh, 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 at the Joint Defense, uh, JDOC, Joint Defense Operations Center, uh, uh, I worked uh, from seven at night to seven in the morning, uh, uh, and I, I was the officer in charge with a Navy Petty Officer. Uh, during the daytime, it was an Army Green Beret captain, and he and I were tent mates. Sorry to say roommate, but we shared a tent down at un air conditioned. Uh, had to leave my air conditioned uh, quarters to, to do that. But this was one of my most uh, interesting, uh, 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 most interesting part of my tour, because uh, Howard uh, had come to Vietnam from Bolivia, where he had trained the Bolivian Rangers, and they were the ones who had killed Che Guevara. Uh, Howard would not tell me, uh, but I could read between the lines that he had been there when Che was dispatched to his reward. Is just reward, and uh, I, I assume that Howard probably had to go into what's the, the equivalent of the witness protection program for the, pretty much the rest of his life, because the communists would want to uh, uh, pay pay him back for his part in that. But uh, just one of the sharpest guys I ever met had a had a master's degree in political science from the University of Michigan, and uh, but he took me up to Natrang, uh, the it was at, I think the second field force headquarters. Uh, I can't remember why we went up there, but uh, stopped at a at a, uh, a camp where he had a friend at um, uh, <clears throat> a rubber plantation to visit uh, on the way up, and uh, uh, and, and it didn't uh, occur to me till recently. And I was going through my picture album where uh, there's a picture of me uh, uh, kind of uh, leaning against the Jeep with my 45 uh, uh, strapped on and uh, 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 that, that I never did get a picture of Howard. And I only learned recently from a retired Green Beret up at uh, Andrews Air Force Base, he's a contractor up there now, uh, uh, and he uh, had been one of the first into Afghanistan uh, while I was still on active duty. Uh, and, and he informed me that one of the things that Green Berets are taught is to not get their pictures taken. And so I have no picture of Howard in the time we were together over in Vietnam. So I just sort of re remember what he looked like, but you know, I, I can only tell people that I, I knew Howard, but I can't prove it. So. Well, what, from your perspective, what were some of the highlights of your tour? Good or bad, I mean, whichever. Oh boy, you know, that stand uh, out. interestingly, uh, I can't say there was really anything bad. Uh, uh, I, I just uh, have fond memories of the, of the guys I served with, and uh, uh, I know there were a lot of guys over there that had some bad experiences because they were in some uh, combat that uh, I just didn't have to go through. We had some rocket attacks and. Stuff. And, 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 and my experiences in, 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 in those were almost comical. The first one, uh, I was a pretty sound sleeper, and uh, uh, we had uh, bunkers uh, that, that, uh, and uh, air raid sirens, and, and, and we were supposed to hit the bunkers uh, whenever we had rocket or mortar attacks. And uh, uh, what, I hadn't been there very long. I, we were in the, the latrine one morning, and, and I'm, get ready to go to work and I was in there shaving and everybody's talking about this rocket attack the night before. I'm thinking, what rocket attack? And and nobody had bothered to wake me to go to the bunker and <laughs> I just slept through the thing. And uh, But uh, it, I don't know how much 
uh, later it was, it turned out to be maybe fortunate because on the Navy side of the base, an unfortunate Navy guy had gone into a bunker where there had been cobra snakes and he got bitten and died. So I decided maybe sleeping through rocket attacks wasn't that bad, bad yeah. uh, right. yeah. after all. But uh, we had, at Cameron we had you know, a few and, and none of them came all that close to where I was. But uh, we had a few guys uh, wouldn't kill during the time I was there. And then we had uh, yeah, Kong Sappers got on the base uh, uh, at the Army Field uh, Hospital, uh, the, I guess the equivalent of MASH hospital there, and uh, killed and wounded a whole bunch of guys. That, that, that was a, probably the biggest uh, thing that happened while I was there. And I think the ammo dump got hit once, uh, and blew the place with smithereens. Uh, with rockets? There. Yeah, I think uh, 122s. So, I mean, there was some excitement uh, from time to time. An F-4 uh, uh, crashed on takeoff and uh, the pilots killed uh, because they took off with a full bomb load and was, those sorts of things. Was 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 Cameron Bay an entry point into the country or yeah. was everybody in this, come through Saigon and then... Uh, Cameron was a, that's okay. where I, I landed. Okay. I, I left uh, from Saigon but landed at Cameron. It was, a, a, I think, the 14th Aero Port Squadron. The camera on. And I had a cousin who was a C-141 pilot, uh, major at the time, uh, retired as a full colonel. But uh, uh, he came in, and uh, I went over at base operations, had a cup of coffee with him. And, uh, I mean, it, for for me, my year in Vietnam was uh, I had such a variety of experiences. Uh, I mentioned to you before we started, I. I uh, uh, got there as the youngest Air Force officer in country because I wasn't a pilot and uh, uh, didn't have to spend that time in pilot training. And uh, uh, the, the people I, I uh, uh, ran into while I was there, uh, General Piers uh, uh, came to speak at a uh, banquet that we had and then he later was the one assigned to investigate the uh, Lieutenant Cowley Milai incident. Uh, I got to chat with him uh, uh, briefly and got a picture in my album <clears throat> of him. Uh, one of my trips to Saigon on uh, just going down on my public affairs uh, 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 responsibilities. Uh, 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 I was able to uh, stay in the air-conditioned quarters of a, a major general uh, uh, who uh, it was arranged by my public affairs counterpart down there. The, the general was gone for some reason and uh, as I've got a picture of my album of that. Uh, got to go downtown Saigon and uh, uh, sip an adult beverage on the uh, on the terrace of the Intercontinental Hotel and go in and pass what, the. What was a what was a, a walk down the street in Saigon like? Well, for a young second lieutenant, uh, you know, a cosmopolitan uh, foreign city, uh, you know, it, I guess uh, made you slightly nervous because there were there were uh, incidents occasionally of uh, terrorist activity. Yeah. You know, Vic Kong uh, uh, would would uh, you know kill some folks from time to time, so that was always in the back of your mind a little bit. We uh, uh, went out to dinner one night. And we're sitting up on the roof of uh, a restaurant, and we off in the distance we could see tracers from a C-47 gunship, and uh, we'd take turns looking over the side of the balcony to make sure somebody wasn't attaching a satchel charge to our jeep. Uh, you just yeah, did those sorts you of just things. never know. Yeah. You just never knew what, yeah. was, what was going to happen. Yeah. It's just part of being there. But uh, you know, you were at, at that age. You just thought you were invincible, and it came with the territory. So, so you spent the last four months at Mung Tao mm -hmm. in in uh, in in the same capacity associated with logistics and supply. What, that actually was a lot different because that, that was a real job down there, okay. uh, being a supply and transportation officer. I mean, I was real busy. Uh, almost forgot to mention, uh, in addition to having respons 
those responsibilities for the two squadrons. Uh, we also had a squadron of Australian C-7 Caribous. Uh, so I had to provide logistical support for them and, and got to know all those Aussie pilots. And, uh, and I was just thinking about that last night. Uh, 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 and I don't know whether anybody in our uh, association has thought about trying to contact those guys and seeing if they can't sometime come to one of our conventions. Uh, but my counterpart, uh, uh, Flight, to, uh, Flight Lieutenant Parks, uh, I hadn't thought about him for years, uh, but I used to go over to their officers club and uh, got to go to Australia on my R&R in uh, uh, July of uh, 69. Of course, that was their winter, so the, the weather wasn't uh, all, all that nice uh, um, and even, even uh, almost a little sleet, as I recall, for a day or two at the time down there. But it was, it was still fun, fun being away from Vietnam for a week. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, interesting experience with them. Uh, I'm not sure I should tell this story, <laughs> but they, uh, uh, one night over their officer's club, I had, uh, uh, they, I, I had on a t-shirt and, and uh, their beer was significantly stronger than American beer. And uh, uh, I think I had, uh, I think it was before I had gone to Australia. My my uh, uh, no, I had I, I had been because uh, because I'd gone before I'd gone down to Bumtown, and uh, <clears throat> I, I had made the statement that uh, to the effect that I can handle Australian beer, and uh, so one of the uh, Aussie officers t got a dry marker and 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 wrote on my T-shirt. Lieutenant Frank says, I can handle Australian beer. And, and so they made sure that I had one in each hand and, and was, was drinking it. The next thing I remembered was the next morning waking up in the bushes next door to the officers, Aussie Officers Club. I have never been as sick in my <laughs> life. That was, that was something. Young so, and so invincible. They, ah, boy. But those guys were fun, and 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 the way they flew those C-7 Caribous was entirely different than the way our guys did. When when I flew with our guys, they would they would tell you to be out in the aircraft at least a half an hour before takeoff time. The Aussies, I flew with them one time from uh, Tonsonut back to Bumtau, and I can't remember why I flew with them rather than our guys. But uh, uh, they they told me to be there five minutes before takeoff time. Our guys, you'd, you'd get on the aircraft and you'd watch the pilots do a walk around and you know, they had a checklist and all this good. The Aussies, they, they would come, turn the key and go. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. It's a lot different. So, we, you, you were there for your last four months. Mm -hmm. were, uh, where did you go when you came back? Well, I had my you know, typical 30-day leave, and then uh, uh, went over to Ramstein Air Base. Okay, uh, spent and two Germany. years there, and that completed my four years of active duty. And uh, great time uh, there in Germany. And uh, what was fantastic about that is, is I had uh, uh, my leave time saved up from Vietnam, and then uh, I had, then I had the 30 days leave for each of the two years uh, being there. But then you had your three-day weekends and, and weekends where you get on a train and go to Paris or uh, uh, Amsterdam. So, so I used all my leave in those two years while I was there. Uh, were, you, were you a bachelor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a little Triumph Spitfire convertible. So I got to all of the West European countries. And there were people that thought that I wasn't even assigned there. I was gone so much of the time. And uh, although the job I had, uh, uh, it was kind of funny. I, I was able to use all the leave and, and be gone, but, but it, it was kind of a double-edged sword because the job I had, I, I ended up uh, uh, not too long after I got there taking over the uh, munitions account at Ramstein Air Base, which only a few years ago it became public was the nuclear weapons storage facility. And uh, the 
previous officer that was assigned was not terribly competent and it was in pretty bad shape. So the time I was there, I had to work pretty hard and the hours were long and I did not get to get to go on ski trips. I never, never learned to ski and uh, uh, so uh, all the uh, touring I did was, was to the non-ski areas. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it still was a, a wonderful tour. When, when, while you were over there, I mean, you, you finished the tour in Vietnam and then really in a very little amount of time you were over in Europe. Did you, what was the reaction or did you experience any reaction of the Europeans to America's participation in, uh, in uh, the Vietnam? Conflict. I mean, that Not was when much. things started. I, uh, uh, I experienced some hostility in Paris uh, because I had a USA sticker on my car, and I really didn't like that. Uh, and to this day, I, I, I have some uh, animosity toward uh, French people, but that, that, I mean, they're that's France. I mean, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I also experienced some uh, real positive uh, reactions from French out in the uh, hinterlands of France. Uh, one place in particular, I, I, uh, a little village, uh, and I can't remember what part of France I was in, I think southern France someplace. Little, uh, 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 I was in a kind of a town square, I stopped, and this old Frenchman saw the USA sticker, and he must have, I don't know whether it was part of the French resistance in World War II or something, but he shouted across the village square, L'America, L'America, bon, bon. You know, I don't speak any French, but I, I can tell <laughs> you what you're He comes over and gives me this big bear hug. You know, it's just fantastic. But I, in Paris, I was getting all these obscene gestures and all oh, yeah. you know. In, in, the, in the interim between Vietnam and, uh, and uh, going to Germany, were you, what, was there a reaction? Well, I'll tell you what I got, uh, what, what, uh, uh, was the most painful, uh, what I got was in the U.S. In the airports in Los Angeles and San Francisco, well, I flew into, from uh, Vietnam into Travis Air Force Base, and I had friends on the West Coast, and uh, uh, so I, I uh, flew from, I had to go to the San Francisco airport to fly down to Los Angeles, and I was in uniform. I got the worst treatment by these hippie types in the San Francisco airport, people, these kids shouting baby killer and this kind of stuff in both San Francisco and Los Angeles. I got very politicized from the Vietnam War and to this day, uh, you know, I, I will never forget how those people treated me as a Vietnam vet. Yeah. Uh, and, and I cannot forgive them for, for that. And, and it's interesting, uh, you know, it's some, I mean, they're doing it all over. I mean, some of the same people, Senator Kerry, Senator Kennedy, they're doing it to the, to the, the kids that are fighting in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. When, in, when you were at Vong Tau in, in Cameron Bay, uh, I'm sure they had Vietnamese civilians working. Mm -hmm. Did, did you have any action, any interaction with them or Vietnamese contractors or what was their reaction? Well, uh, to uh, barbers, uh, uh, Sunday mornings, uh, it almost got to be a routine. Uh, uh, I'd go down to the uh, officers club and have breakfast. And then I'd go over to the steam bath and uh, uh, get a massage by the, the young, uh, and I haven't told my wife about this either. Uh, young Vietnamese girls who, uh, uh, the massage consisted of these uh, young, um, tiny girls walking all over and massaging you with their toes and uh, it just felt so good and, and, uh, uh, and then uh, head down to the beach for the rest of the day. You know, and, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they're all, uh, they, they all seem very friendly until, uh, like the sapper attack. Uh, the, 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 among the dead occasionally would be the barber or uh, right. you know, that sort of thing. I, I remember uh, 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 we had a Christmas party at our C-7 Caribou Wing headquarters uh, and the uh, Cameron uh, village chief was there and in his broken English, uh, you know, thanking the Americans for what they were doing. And I was standing by our wing uh, intelligence officer who leans over to tell me he's a Viet Cong sympathizer. You know, uh, 
So I mean, that that's the way yeah. things work. Uh, down at Bung Tao, um, uh, the little fourteen-year-old boy that uh, stood guard most of the time. One one time, uh, uh, he, he came in and he just uh, he, he seemed to just kind of be starved for affection. He came and he just kind of cuddled up to me and. Uh, 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 one of the, one of the girls who worked there, who, which I had enough sense, I didn't. I went over and drank beer. I didn't uh, partake of any of the other uh, uh, you know, services offered. But uh, 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 one of the girls in particular, uh, I don't know why he pointed her out to me, but but I remember distinctly he, he whispered to me, "She no good. She BC." Was, yeah. So that, I mean that's that was Vietnam. Had to, had to be careful. So what they, about the people you worked with? You were mentioning earlier that was one of the reasons that uh, you thought that was uh, that it was a good year. Mm -hmm. Just can you give us some idea of, of uh, what what causes you to say that? I just uh, I don't know the the, the, the caliber of people. Uh, my roommate in uh, in Bung Tao in particular. Uh, one of the most interesting uh, uh, things about him, um, he, he's a Purdue graduate, uh, uh, retired from the Air Force uh, as a lieutenant colonel and became a Delta pilot uh, and retired from Delta. He lives down in the uh, New Orleans area now and uh, uh, he's a NASCAR fanatic and has a big motor home and uh, goes to every NASCAR race. Uh, he's got season tickets and uh, that's, that's all he does. And, uh, uh, he is the funniest guy I've ever met in my life. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I mentioned I, I live in Anderson, Indiana. Uh, on one side of me is, is a, a fellow that uh, is two years younger, uh, but uh, he ended up going into the Air Force and was a KC-135 pilot, and my Vietnam roommate flew with him at K.I. Sawyer in Michigan on the other side of me lives a fellow who was two years older than me, who was my Vietnam roommate's roommate at Purdue University. Now, just think of the chance of that happening, that he knew in Anderson, Indiana, three guys that lived in a row in, in, in houses. I mean, that's statistically impossible. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Anyway, John is, is a character. He uh, uh, one incident that happened uh, uh, down in Bung Tao uh, uh, at, at our hotel. We had uh, uh, it was about four stories, I think three stories of rooms, and on top was our our uh, uh, kind of dining room and uh, bar. And we had two Vietnamese gals that cooked and and uh, uh, served uh, our adult beverages. And uh, uh, but. Uh, uh, one evening he came back and uh, was talking about the mission that day and apparently they'd, they'd had some pretty heavy uh, ground fire and uh, he was a pilot in command and uh, you know, was talking about this and he was laughing about uh, 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 how the, you can see the, the uh, uh, tracers uh, following him around uh, uh, as they were, uh, uh, I don't know whether they were airdropping or exactly what was going on. But to him, it was just no big deal. Well, his co-pilot, this young I don't know, I think he was fairly uh, new in country, but his co-pilot looked like he was in catatonic shock. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the difference in how these two guys were handling this uh, particular uh, mission was uh, was interesting. But uh, John was just taking it in stride. But uh, uh, and it, it, there were just a lot of funny stories. These guys who come back from. Uh, each day, one one guy. I mean, they because they, these guys were not fighter pilots, but they some of them were frustrated fighter pilots. And uh, one in particular came was coming back uh, after a day of uh, delivering cargo and uh, uh, dropped down and was pretending he was uh, going to be strafing some water buffalo, and unfortunately got shot up uh, pretty badly by some PC on the ground and. Uh, 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 barely made it back because uh, he lost so much fuel and uh, 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 landed empty and uh, got grounded uh, uh, because of that incident and uh, lost a chance for a promotion. But, uh, you mentioned also uh, that you you have the opportunity in, in your travels to uh, you visit a lot of military bases mm -hmm. and, and talk with a lot of people and, and 
in some cases show them pictures or where they were. Um, is, is that an organized thing or is it something you do on your own? Well, I just, uh, uh, because I'm retired, I've got the time, and it actually started uh, around Thanksgiving. Uh, of 2006? Yeah. Uh, my mother passed away, and uh, we went up to Indiana for her funeral, and just I decided I'd need a little time to clear my head, and uh, my wife and boys uh, returned to South Carolina, and uh, uh, we'd driven two cars up, and I had a rental car, and uh, just decided I'd head on uh, out to Washington, D.C. for Veterans Day uh, activities. And, uh, so I, I just stopped at several bases, uh, uh, Dayton, uh, Wright Patterson uh, for a night, and, uh, and then on out to, to Washington, and uh, uh, stopped at Fort Bragg, and, and uh, got to visit the headquarters there at Fort Bragg, and uh, uh, Fort Myers out in uh, Washington, and uh, it, it just and, and, and seeing some of these young troops. Uh, uh, and talking to them over BXs and PXs and so forth, I just decided I, I wanted to do more of that. It just really inspired me. Uh, 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 I was at Quantico, uh, uh, so I've just started doing this, uh, you know, taking a day here, a couple of days there, and uh, been out to Camp Lejeune. Uh, 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 because for medical reasons, been to Fort Jackson, uh, uh, Fairly frequently here uh, since the first of the year, uh, but uh, I've uh, been here at Fort uh, McPherson now uh, on a fairly regular basis because uh, I've gotten to like that facility a lot. I think it's one of the neatest uh, installations the military has. Well, do you do you know some of the people on the staff there now? I mean, at Fort McPherson, yeah, yeah. Uh, got to meet General Honoré uh, on the 4th of July, uh, just uh, for a few moments. He wouldn't remember me, pro uh, probably, but uh, I remember him from uh, the Katrina right. uh, 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 when uh, they brought him in to try to sort things out and him uh, dealing with the media with his, uh, you're stuck on stupid uh, comment. I mentioned that to him when I met him, uh, and his, uh, he was with his wife, and his wife uh, got a kick out of that, and, uh, but I'll, I'll never forget that. But uh, uh, I've gotten to know some, some of the folks, particularly over at the BOQ office, but uh, uh, but it's a good place to stay when it comes to the Atlanta era, area uh, for a baseball game or for something else. But I've uh, gotten over to Fort Gordon uh, a couple of times and probably stay there tonight. After I go visit a close friend that we were in officer training school together. But uh, one other thing, uh, uh, um, about the uh, tour in Vietnam, uh, almost forgot to mention, which was a funny story. Uh, uh, went up to Da Nang with my full colonel boss. Uh, uh, he uh, had a friend up there, a captain he'd been with on a previous previous assignment, and took me along. It is not untypical for a senior officer is probably do this in other services, but I had this happen to me a number of times in the Air Force. A, a full colonel would uh, kind of take a second lieutenant under his wing, and uh, so uh, Colonel LaRue took me uh, with him up to Denain and uh, uh, to visit this uh, captain friend. And uh, uh, the captain took us around Denang. We went to the uh, Navy Officers Club downtown and uh, came back to the, uh, uh, the Air Force Officers Club in Denang. And all the F-4 pilots were in there getting kind of rowdy and uh, uh, flying over the north, uh, uh, kind of relieving the tension. And uh, uh, Colonel LaRue had flown B-17s in World War II, and this was uh, going to be his last assignment. He was, he was getting up there in years, and uh, after a couple of drinks, he, he uh, stood up and uh, made the bold statement that these guys hadn't, hadn't seen anything like B-17 pilots had in, in World War II. Well, he apparently had, had had a clue about what these guys had seen over over Hanoi, and uh, so after a few minutes, uh, a few of these guys walked over and picked up full Colonel Larue and threw him over the bar, and a lot of broken glass and everything. I, I thought that was rather audacious for the captains and lieutenants and maybe a major to pick up a full Colonel and sort of throw him over the bar. So. Um, after, and it, and it, 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 it kind of uh, 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 hurt Colonel LaRue's back a little bit. And, and so after a while, I, I went over and I told these guys that. You know, I, I was sort of stunned. And I, 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 uh, I, I, I 
I went over and showed him. I said, boy, that takes a lot of guts to throw a full kernel over the bar and you know, they just pass it off as, you know, no big deal. So I went back and, and sat down with the kernel and uh, so a few minutes later they came over and picked me up and threw me over the bar. <laughs> so I, I've always kind of... Kind of that's a funny story. That's, that's a funny I, uh, story. I've got look back on that with some fondness that uh, uh, me and the colonel got, uh, got uh, indoctrinated that way up to the Nang Officers Club. We again, to, to wrap that up, the uh, uh, young uh, uh, lieutenant that was the club officer, uh, apparently uh, tiring of all the broken glass, uh, came in and announced that if there was any more broken glass, he was going to shut down the club. Well, you can kind of guess then what happened. Every glass hit the wall. These guys uh, uh, apparently was of a mind that, you know, what are you going to do to me? Right. Yeah, yeah, so see. These fighter pilots. Uh, were, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, we're, we're about, uh, we have about five more minutes yeah. to go. Um, how would you summarize? I mean, I know you, you. It was it was not an unpleasant year for you. I mean, you thought it was a rewarding experience. If you had to summarize it, how would you do it? And you know, any other comments that uh, you'd like to close out with? To be honest, I, I almost feel guilty that uh, it was that enjoyable for me when I I know it wasn't that enjoyable for a lot of guys and a lot of guys didn't come back. Uh, one in particular was a fraternity brother who uh, uh, got drafted in the army. He lost his scholarship uh, at Northwestern because of his grades. Uh, he, uh, uh, he was there on a uh, basketball scholarship and got to partying a little bit too much and his grades uh, got bad. And, uh, we had to leave school, got drafted, and got killed six days after he got in the country. Uh, and so I've been to Washington, and I've seen Tom's name on the wall, and uh, even seen it on the traveling wall that came to Greenville a few years ago, and think of Tom uh, periodically, and uh, all those maybe 58,000 plus that didn't come back. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was a rewarding time um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, when we have our reunions, uh, and, I, and I look forward to the one in San Antonio in September. Um, it, it's it, there's there's there are no better people. Right, the camaraderie. It's, it's, it's yeah. Uh, the, the 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 wives that, that attend. My wife's been to one, and and I know a lot of them just just uh, can't understand it. Uh, it's too bad. I, I, I wish. Uh, I wish they could, but if, if, if you haven't been a part of it, I, uh, I'm sure there's just no way. But I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, I understand. Um, uh, and that's a, that's a comment we get quite frequently. You know, I, I, and I run into uh, guys that, that, that didn't serve, and I can tell now that uh, they, they wish they had. Uh, for whatever reason, they didn't. I, I know there, there are, are some that uh, uh, developed excuses at the time for not serving that I think they feel some guilt uh, for not doing it. Some had legitimate reasons, but uh, uh, boy, if, 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 if I hadn't and, 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 and arrived at this point and didn't, I, I just, I, I don't know how I'd feel. Yeah. But I'm sure glad I did. Well, I want to thank you for your time here today, and I also want to thank you for your service. We appreciate mm -hmm. that, and uh, uh, it's been a pleasure hearing your story. Yeah, thank thank you. you.